Residents in a small Minnesota town were assessing the damage after a train derailment led to an explosion. The town of Callaway, which has about 200 residents, was evacuated Thursday evening. The evacuation came after a train collided with a semi-truck carrying protein, propane tanks that eventually exploded. Of course, twisted metal and mangled steel still littering the area. Residents say pictures were knocked off the walls. Even their attic entries were blown out by the blast. Oh, we had a bunch more pictures. They were all on the floor, insulation on the floor. The crawl space covers blew out. We've got a home. And on the other side, we got another home. They've got siding, windows, uh, uh, the attic. The attic entries were blown open and, and the sucked insulation down into their homes. Police say the cause of the accident is still under investigation, and it is unknown if the truck driver will face any charges. The total amount of the damage is still being determined. Four people are dead, and all things are pointing to carbon monoxide poisoning. Officials say high levels of carbon monoxide were detected in two-story apartment building in Delaware. They say two people were found dead in one apartment. Two others were found dead in a separate apartment. The rest of the building was evacuated, and firefighters searched the complex. Police do not believe foul play was involved. The cause of the carbon monoxide buildup is unknown. A Massachusetts mother is accused of forcing her young son to steal from a store after leaving court for separate shoplifting charges. Police say the 33-year-old woman had just been arraigned in court for shoplifting charges stemming from an incident in December. Well, that's when she allegedly forced her 8-year-old son to push a shopping cart full of stolen goods out of a Kohl's department store. Animal activists are cautioning parents against giving live animals um, to children as a gift this Easter holiday. Well, bunnies and baby chicks are sometimes popular gifts for the holiday. But as John Rogers tells us, many animal activists say parents are doing a lot of harm than good. In massive outdoor cages here at the Sarasota in defense of animals, dozens of abandoned rabbits are cared for. And Elise Mathis expects to get more in the next few weeks. We get them mostly after Easter. Uh, people think that they can fend for themselves, so they uh, release the ones they don't want after Easter. Mathis says these critters are cute, but they're more of a hassle than people realize. So these Easter gifts are often left at animal shelters or abandoned in the wild, where they don't know how to survive. You know, we have a throwaway society. You get tired of something, you discard it, and you don't care what happens to it. Sad. It is sad. Animal experts say rabbits are fragile and can be easily injured. They also need constant daily care and attention. They live a long time, they multiply, and they tend to damage furniture. They're not an ideal Easter gift. Their newness wears off very fast because it is a challenge to take care of them. So officials say please think twice and do your research before buying a bunny for Easter. Also, rabbits need new bedding daily and they must have a lot of space for exercise. So this is why chocolate bunnies are a better option this Easter. And I think Jesse would agree. White chocolate, right? White chocolate bunnies. That's yes. right. Hollow white chocolate bunnies. Yep. All right, so we're looking at some uh, rainfall chances uh, for today, mainly close to the coast. But by tomorrow for Easter Sunday, unfortunately, it looks like all of us are going to see some storms. We're talking about an 80% chance of rain tomorrow. Let's look first at this live shot here in City Park. And, of course, that's the Crescent City uh, Classic finish line there. Photographer Stefan Cage getting those shots for us this morning. And the race weather actually wasn't that bad. Mostly cloudy, but no rainfall uh, for the race, just a little bit mild, but overall pretty comfortable, low to mid 60s. Now, as you look at our satellite and radar picture, we had plenty of showers and storms around uh, coastal parishes, around Plaquemines Parish, and stretching off toward uh, Galliano. Uh, this morning in the overnight hours, but now all that is kind of pushing off to the east. You can see the worst of it now over toward Mobile and Pensacola, and a lot of storms still offshore. A little bit of lingering rain still around our area right now, say uh, just around Lafitte and around St. Bernard Parish there, moving off to the northeast around the Mississippi Gulf Coast, but they're weakening. You see the beginning of the loop there with all that lightning, but by the end of the loop, there's not much lightning at all, so it's showing us that those storms are losing a bit of intensity, but still expect just a few lingering showers around for the next half hour or so. And then for the rest of the day after this morning, we're only talking about a 20% chance of rainfall. So as you look at the temperatures right now, upper 50s and low 60s on the North Shore. South Shore, we're looking at low to mid to even upper 60s and Homa seeing a 59 degree temperature still. So it's a little bit mild to start off the day and wind speeds right now 
are calm in plenty of locations, but we're seeing a light wind currently at about 5 to 10 miles per hour from the east. That will be switching out of the southeast later on. Now, this stationary frontal boundary is going to start pushing off to the north, and with that tomorrow, it's going to kind of be placed right on top of us. And so by tomorrow, we're looking at a much better chance of rainfall than we saw this morning. Coastal parishes this morning, but over all of us by tomorrow. Watch what happens. Uh, this is around 5.30 a.m. We're starting to see that potential for some showers and storms. By 10.30, it's draped all across the area, so heavy downpours are going to be possible starting uh, late tomorrow morning and heading into the early afternoon hours. All this starts to kind of push off to the east by the late afternoon, early evening. Some lingering showers still around by 5.30 tomorrow. And then late tomorrow night into Monday morning, that's when our rain chances will start to come to an end. So by the time we get into Monday and Tuesday, weather will be just fine. But unfortunately for Easter Sunday tomorrow, it does look a little bit stormy. So our highs today will be warm, 76 degrees. Coastal showers will be possible, about a 20% chance of that. We're seeing them this morning and just a slight chance for the rest of the day. We'll have that south wind at 5 to 10. Overnight, it remains cloudy. It will be muggy. We'll have a couple of isolated showers around. Those lows tonight not dropping much. They'll stay in the low to mid-60s as we go through the night. So here's a look now at the seven-day forecast. And what we're looking at... 75 today and 76 for tomorrow, but notice that 80% chance of rainfall for Easter Sunday tomorrow. By Monday and Tuesday, we're mainly dry, plenty of sunshine, temperatures still mild, but it looks like Monday and Tuesday will be the best days of the week as we'll have plenty of sun, no rainfall chance for those days. But we get to another pattern by the time Wednesday arrives, and now stretching to Thursday and Friday where it does appear that we're going to have a few rounds of showers and storms. So rainy tomorrow and then rainy again by the end of the week heading into next weekend. Farah? All right, well, the spring is here, so it's time to start thinking about your lawn. Lance Walheim is here to tell us more about it. He was just giving me some tips on how to uh, mulch my grass. It's hard to believe that people are out mowing right now. It, it's here. Spring is here, right? It really is. You know, the grass is growing vigorously. The weeds are growing <laughs> visibly, and so it's time to get out there and do something. And when you talk about lawn care, it's really about doing a lot of things right, not just one. And one of them is mowing. You want to have a sharp blade. Absolutely. You want to have the mower set at the right height. And you want to leave the clippings because they're going to get, add nitrogen and a great event, organic matter. So this is actually, if you can't stand the clipping, this is a mulching blade you can mm -hmm. put on your mower. It chops them up really small. You, you don't have, you know, then they filter in real easily into the grass and you don't have those. And this keeps us from having to sweep them up and take it to the dump, is there what you, you were go. telling me. That's exactly. Which is more work, so why would we do that? Yeah, we don't need to fill the landfill. <laughs> we got other stuff we're throwing I know. So tell me about some other important things we need. You know, when it comes to watering, it's very important. You know, hard to believe when it gets so much rain. But, you know, having a uh, rain sensor on your timer that shuts it off if it's, in case it's raining, that's yeah. a great way to go so you don't water your lawn when it's raining. This is a moisture sensor right there that goes in the ground communicates to the timer. We even have new timers now that are hooked to weather stations that can really water precisely. And then of course we want to fertilize. The timing is really important. We want to use the right type of slow release fertilizer. And then of course this time of year everybody's having problems with some of the weeds. We got mm -hmm. a little dandelion here and some other things in there. And so that's why I really recommend this product. That's a very advanced three-in-one weed and feed for southern lawns. Mm -hmm. um, when you used to have to apply several different products Yep. Several different times. I remember those line. days. Yeah, and so it's, this is it one costs time. so much money when you're buying a fertilizer for this weed or this weed or this weed, and it's just out of control. That's what this does. I mean, that's why it's so great. It saves you money and gives you a great looking mm -hmm. lawn. Nice. Yeah, and it, you know, it kills existing broadleaf weeds. It pre prevents grassy and broadleaf weeds for up to six months, and it feeds lawn. Now, obviously, we always say it's very important you read the label because there's a lot of great instructions on there that are going to make the product work a lot better and be much more efficient. So, And you want timing is also important. You mm -hmm. want the lawn and you want the weeds growing vigorously. So read the label instructions. It tells you how to set up your spreader and you'll be off and running. I think we're all guilty about not reading the instructions, so that's good advice. It's, it's we just important. throw it the out there. The label is the lot. No, you don't want to do that. Yeah, you I, you throw it out there and you think, what happened? There are all these weeds growing and my grass is dying. So, yeah, this is it's good to is read. Important. You know, the, the labels, the, like we say, the label is the lot, but it's also the best way to get the best results. So read them carefully and do it correctly. All right, and don't forget, folks, you can always add color with your plants. Well, Thanks there you so go. much. Thank I you. know, this is nice beautiful. Well, if you want some more tips on a great lawn, make sure that you have the correct mower and cutting height, correct watering proper fertilization and of course weed control is necessary and remember you can stay informed anytime anywhere 24 7 at wdsu.com on twitter or on our facebook page